Now we've got the scene set up with our FBX file imported, what can we do with this to um, make it look kind of graphic, use it um, in our projects? Well, one of the things we could do is we could trace the motion of the skeleton, and we can do that using the MoGraph Tracer object. So first of all, just make sure that you don't have anything selected in the Object Manager. If you do, this will be added to the Tracer automatically, and I think we're going to add these um, manually. Come to the MoGraph menu, come down and add in a Tracer object. If we switch to our Attributes Manager, you can see under the Object tab, the first element is a trace link. Now with the tracer, what happens is it uses objects that we place into this link and it generates splines from these. We can do this from a group of objects, we can drag a cloner in there and we can trace the children of our cloner. We can also drag um, a polygon object and we can trace the vertices from such an object. In this example, however, I'm going to drag in individual bones from our bone skeleton and use those to create our splines. So it's probably a good idea first of all to fold down the trace link and maybe pull our attribute up manager up slightly. Next if we press control and unfold our root null this will unfold the whole hierarchy. Now it doesn't really matter the order in which you drag the elements for this first example, but for the second example I'm going to show, it will make a difference. So it's probably a good idea to just drag them in the order that I do for now. You can always come back later and uh, mess around with a different order and see the different effects you can achieve creating this. So first of all, I'm going to grab the hips bone and drag that in. If we select the hips, you can see this is the point that we're going to be tracing select the tracer object again so we can just see our trace link list and let's drag in the neck bone then the head bone and we're just going to travel down through the hierarchy and drop in different bones for the different points that we would like to trace so after the shoulder I'm going to drag in the left arm next the left forearm and then the left hand. I don't think we really need to uh, actually drag in all the fingers. And you could create lots and lots of splines very quickly. So I've just scrolled down. Now I'm going to drag in right shoulder. Next, right arm, right forearm, and right hand. Again, I'm going to scroll down past all the fingers for the right hand side, and we come to our legs. So let's drag in left up leg and then left leg. Finally, left toes. Okay, finally, the right side. And here we're going to drag in right up leg, right leg, and then right toes. So we've basically dragged in objects from various points along our skeleton. If we rewind to the beginning and press play now, you can immediately see the, the effect. If we switch to our side view, you can see that we've now created splines. And these splines are showing us the path from all of those different objects. It's quite, in, quite, quite an interesting pattern already. Now, depending on which version of Cinema 4D you're using and depending on the type of FBX file that you're using, you may or you may not see the splines actually in your editor view at this time. You may be thinking, hold on a minute, I can't actually see any splines in my editor. Now, the reason for that could be because um, you're using a newer version of FBX and instead of it being based on using bones, it actually uses joints. And it will probably look very, very similar in the object manager as this does. Now you can tell if you're using a joint object, well firstly you can click on it and it will tell you in the attribute manager that it's a joint, not a bone, but you can also tell because the icon, although it looks very similar, um, is in fact light green and it's pointing the other way. Um, the difference in the icon is pretty small so you may not notice that at first. Anyway, beside all that, the way to fix this if you are using joints, um, and depending on which version of Cinema 4D you have, it may or may not work, um, but you need to come into the attribute manager for the tracer object and just uncheck trace vertices. A joint object is slightly different to a bone and for some reason we need to uncheck trace vertices to get a result in our editor view when working with the tracer object. So if you don't have a result, don't um, panic, just um, check whether you're using joints or not and if you are, uncheck trace vertices and it all should be okay. 
So what can we do with this once we've created it? There's quite a few things we can do with this actually. So let's switch back to our tracer object and come down and have a look at some of the attributes. Before we go through these parameters however, we can just alt double click on the small traffic lights. By holding alt it will change both of them. Two clicks will make them red. That then hides our FBX skeleton from the view and now we can just press play and see the splines alone. That's all we're really interested in at the moment. So that just makes our editor view a little bit clearer. In the attribute manager after the trace link we have the option here tracing mode. Now this is pretty important because this defines uh, what mode the tracer is going to use to create our splines and here it's set to trace paths. We also have connect all objects and connect elements. Now we'll come back to the connect options later. So for now just leave it to trace paths and what that basically means it will trace the position and rotation paths of our objects as they move around in the 3D space and this will then generate our splines. The next option is sample step and we can use that to define how many samples it takes and at the moment it's set to one which means it will take a sample for every frame and if we press play you can see that we are indeed getting a reasonably smooth spline. If we set this to something like five you can see that it's creating a little bit more of an abstract result and we're getting a sample every five frames. So you can use this advantageously if you want to create something that's a little bit more abstract and doesn't have quite a smooth result. But for now let's leave this to one. The next option here is trace active and if we uncheck this it will create gaps in our spline. So you could animate this if you wanted to uh, create gaps along your spline. We have the option to trace vertices which isn't relevant in this example and we won't be using it for this class but this basically will trace any of the points on your object. So if you have a cube you can trace all of the corners for instance. Finally on these checkboxes we have used TP subgroups and this is to use thinking particle subgroups and that's it because we can basically use the tracer to trace particles. So you can imagine the uh, kind of results we could get with this. We're not going to be using particles in this group because we're working solely with FBX so that's not relevant either. The next option, handle cloners, nodes only, in immediate clones and clones of clones, is if you're using a cloner in your trace link and it will allow you to trace the node only which means the cloner or otherwise the immediate clones or any children of clones. So you can use this if you have quite a complex setup with a cloner to trace all of the children of your cloner object. The next option is space and at the moment that's set to global and basically that means that it will use the global space of all of our objects to trace our splines. In other words the position of the tracer itself isn't included. So we can move our tracer wherever we want and it will make no difference to the splines that we create. They'll basically be using the actual global position of our trace objects. We can switch this to local and we'll have a look at that shortly and how we can use that to change the way our trace is generated. Next we have the option to limit our traced splines. So let's set this to from start. That basically means that it will limit our spline from the start. So if we set this to 20 press play, Whoop, play forwards even, let's just rewind, press play and you can see that it limits our spline, it draws it for the first 20 frames and after that it stops drawing it. So you can use this to limit the amount of spline that is visible. The next option from end is probably a little bit more useful and it basically allows us to limit the length of our spline um, and at the moment it's set to 20 so what that means is as we press play once it reached 20 our spline stays at that length so you can use that to create a kind of trail and of course all of these amounts are animatable so if we set that to 10 you can see that the trail becomes slightly shorter at the bottom here we have the options for the type of spline that we'd like to create let's just switch limit back to none momentarily and if we switch our sample step to 5 you can see that we are getting quite hard corners. This is because by default our type is set to linear. Now this does make sense because if you think about it with a sample step of one, a point for our spline is being created on every frame. So that's going to generally create a reasonably smooth curve. However, if you have um, a different sample step and you still want a smooth spline, or if you have a lot of movement between one frame and the next, you're going to create corners on your spline and you may not always want that. You may sometimes want to have a smooth spline, in which case you can adjust the parameters here. And for those of you that are familiar with working with splines in Cinema 4D, you're probably quite familiar with these setups anyway. 
So for instance, you could set this to something like B spline and set the intimate points to be adaptive. If we set this to natural, and there you go, and you can see that now we're getting a much smoother result. You do probably want to lower the number of intermediate points because otherwise you're going to slow down your machine if you're generating lots and lots of splines because you're going to have a huge number of intermediate points as well. Okay, so I'm just going to set the sample step back to 1, and I'm also going to switch limit to from end. As for the spline type, I'm going to set this to be cubic for now, and I'm going to set it to natural with an intermediate number of points of 2. If we set the limit amount to, say, 35 frames, and if we just press play, we should get a nice smooth trail. Now the thing with cubic is it is a little bit tighter and it will stick to the generated points whereas B spline is a little bit looser um, so it really depends on the kind of look you're after. Okay so now we have these splines being generated in our viewport. Of course if we switch back to perspective and render we don't get any result. So we need to think about what we can do with these splines once we've created them, how we can use those to um, create something visible when we render either by generating geometry or using um, alternative techniques. 